You've heard of cataracts and you know they're a common eye condition, but what exactly are they? And is there anything you can do to prevent them or slow them down? In today's video, we'll cover all of that. Plus, make sure to wait around until the end because I'll give you some tips and tricks to know when it's time for surgery for your cataracts, as well as some tips on how to slow them down. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. Hi, I'm Dr. D. I'm a doctor of optometry with my own private practice. I'm residency trained in ocular disease and I specialize in dry eye. Here on this channel, I post educational videos about eye health and vision products. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Throughout this video, feel free to check out our description box below where I've left plenty of helpful tips and tricks and links and things. Check it out anytime during the video. Today's topic is cataracts. All right, pupils, let's go to eye school. So first to understand cataracts, it's important to understand the ocular anatomy of where these are occurring and the natural lifetime of the lens of the eye. So cataracts occur in the lens of your eye. Our eyes are like a camera focusing light all of the time. Lights coming into the eye and getting focused by the cornea and the lens together, and that's what helps you see. Over time and doing all that work, the lens starts to get cloudy and opaque, and that's what a cataract is. It's a cloudiness or a pacification of the lens of your eye. As you can imagine, since that's a critical part of how you see is by looking through that lens, when it becomes opacified or opaque even, it becomes very, very difficult to see, and cataracts can affect your vision greatly. Luckily, there's surgery for cataracts, and we can replace this lens with an intraocular implant to help you see. Now, the natural lifetime of a lens, when you're a kid, it's clear and wonderful and so flexible. And then sometime in your late 30s, early 40s, you start to notice that that lens has gradually put down layers over the years and it's become more stiff and less flexible. And so the first change we notice that happens to our lenses is an inability to focus up close. I made an entire video about that and we'll make sure to link it above where I talk more about presbyopia or trouble up close. The next change that occurs to your lens is that you start to get an opacification, a yellowing, a, maybe even a brown color to the lens, but the lens starts to age. That's a result of oxidation and it happens to everybody. It's just part of living and being alive and it's a normal tissue change that occurs. Uh, many optometrists are fond of saying that everybody gets cataracts if you have enough birthdays, and that's absolutely true. We will all have some aging of our lenses. Next, we're gonna talk a little bit about the specific changes that occur in the lens and how those changes affect your vision. So in general, a cataract is an opacification of the lens, but did you know that there's actually different kinds of cataracts? It's true, you may have one kind or another kind, or you might have a combination of different types of cataracts. So we're gonna go through the most common cataract types, and I'll even mention a couple of interesting ones at the end that are less common. So the first type of cataract is called nuclear sclerosis. So this is really referring to where in the anatomy of the lens the aging change is taking place. Clinically speaking, I see nuclear sclerosis as a, just a generalized yellowing or brownness to the lens that gradually comes on. As a patient, this is typically the kind of cataract that is going to reduce your contrast sensitivity, make it a little bit harder to see colors, differentiating that black versus navy versus dark brown um, becomes a little more difficult. Because the lens um, becomes yellow in appearance or even brown, it can cause problems with your blue hues especially. Here's an example of a nuclear sclerotic cataract. At the beginning of this video, you can see that the lens is completely clear. And as the video plays, there's a gradual haziness that happens first centrally, and then it encompasses the entire lens until that lens looks almost brown in appearance. 
If you can imagine looking through that media, you would be seeing colors very altered. You would, your visual acuity is lessened with a nuclear sclerotic cataract where you used to see 2020. Now maybe you're seeing 2030 or 2040. It's just hard to get that fine detail. And you may even have some glare through this type of cataract, although not as much as the other forms of cataract. The second type of cataract is cortical. Cortical cataracts occur as spokes or sheets, and they start in the cortex of the lens. So here I've got an example of a cortical cataract. Again, we're starting with a lens that's clear, and you can see that you start to get spokes, and sometimes they're even like sheets that are coming into the center of the lens. When those cortical spokes and sheets are in the way of your vision, so if they make it to the pupil and they make it sort of to that central axis of the lens where you're looking through, they're really notorious for causing a lot of glare. So glare at night, glare during the day, glare with lights, it's because those little spokes are shooting light off in all directions. The third type of common cataract to see is called a posterior subcapsular cataract. So a posterior subcapsular cataract happens beneath that capsular bag at the back, back of the lens, the posterior aspect. These tend to happen much more quickly than the other types. They can come on a lot faster. They also tend to happen, in my experience, very centrally, and they decline the vision much more rapidly than other cataracts. Here's a video of a posterior subcapsular cataract forming. You see a clear central lens, and then all of a sudden you get this haziness, and that is at the back of that lens. As you can imagine, that type of cataract is um, difficult to see through, so it's gonna cause a reduction in visual acuity, worsened vision, worsened contrast sensitivity, and this one will cause some glare as well. And again, this is typically the most rapid onset type of cataract. In general, your nuclear cataracts and your cortical cataracts are the type that I probably see the most frequently. Those are the most age-related, I would say. Your posterior subcapsular can also just be age-related, but they're often also brought on by other conditions. Uncontrolled diabetes, long-term steroid use, and other ocular conditions will have posterior subcapsular cataracts um, in a higher number than the average population. There's also some different types of cataracts. It's possible to have congenital cataracts when you're born. It's possible to have traumatic cataracts after an injury. It's also possible to have a really fun type of cataract called a Christmas tree cataract. Google that image and check it out because they're really cool looking and pretty rare, but neat when you see them. So let's talk a little bit about cataract surgery. Modern cataract surgery is an outpatient procedure. Surgeons use something called phacoemulsification to break that lens up into a million tiny pieces and take it out of your eye. This is in contrast to older cataract surgery techniques like extracapsular cataracts and taking out the lens whole. That doesn't happen anymore. An ultrasound type probe is um, used to break up that cataract and it's taken out, like I said, after phacoemulsification. So here's how I prep my patients for cataract surgery. You can expect that after your primary eye care provider, your optometrist or ophthalmologist identifies a cataract that's ready for surgery, they're gonna refer you to the surgeon. The surgeon will then do an assessment of your cataract and determine if they're going to take it out or not. At that visit, they'll schedule the surgery and they'll also take some special measurements in order to calculate your implantable lens correctly. They may even talk to you about some different lens implant options. Nowadays, we have spherical options. That's typically the one covered by insurance here in the United States. But there's also toric implants, meaning correctable for astigmatism. You, if you have astigmatism, check out my astigmatism video above and know that with cataract surgery, it is possible to correct for astigmatism. In addition, finally, there are multifocal implantable lenses during cataract surgery that your surgeon may discuss with you. On the day of your surgery, you'll show up 
and have the surgery outpatient, you'll get to go home that day. Typically, patients are able to see really well after cataract surgery. You can anticipate that you'll see your surgeon the day after surgery, one to two weeks after surgery, and then one month after surgery. In addition, you'll take eye drops. In the United States, it's typically three eye drops for one month. Your doctor will put you on a steroid drop to control inflammation, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drop to um, prevent the formation of something called Irving gas syndrome, which is a swelling of the macula that occurs after cataract surgery. And finally, they'll have you on an antibiotic for the first week to make sure you don't get a secondary infection after your surgery. In my clinic, I wait to assess vision until 30 days out from surgery. And so keep in mind that you might not be getting any prescription eyeglasses for just a little while until your eyes have had a chance to heal. Following surgery, several visual outcomes are possible. You may find that you see in the distance perfectly, but you need readers up close. You may find that you have a bit of residual prescription for the distance and still need to wear a progressive or other visual correction. And finally, you might not even need glasses or contacts at all, depending on the lenses you had implanted during your cataract surgery. Let's talk a little bit about how to prevent cataracts. Now, unfortunately, cataracts are just sort of a rite of passage of getting older, but because it is an oxidative process, there are several things you can do in order to try to prevent or slow them down. Always wear sunglasses, even on cloudy days, because there's more UV making it through the clouds than you realize. Second, take a careful look at your diet. If you are diabetic, it's, it's really important to control your sugars. It seems to be those high and low sugar fluctuations that cause um, changes in the lens over time. And just in general, have a diet that's rich in antioxidants. You know, being on a fish oil supplement is a good idea. Eating lots of green leafy vegetables, if you can tolerate them, um, fruits and vegetables. And I like to say sort of shopping the outside of the grocery store. If we stay away from inflammatory things like sugar, preservatives, um, our bodies tend to do a lot better. Remember, you're fighting an oxidative aging process, and so if you can get an antioxidant, high antioxidant diet, that's a good thing. I'm not a nutritionist, but just in general, taking a look at your diet is worth it. So finally, as promised, let's talk about when cataracts are ready. So typically cataracts are ready when your eye is, when your vision is 20, 40 or worse when your glare visual acuity is 2060 or worse. And some doctors have special instrumentation, special testing to have a potential glare acuity so they can figure out exactly how much glare is affecting your vision. So acuity on a, on a bright sunny day, acuity in a glare situation is looked at. And finally, your activities of daily living. If cataracts are affecting your daily life, if they're making it impossible for you to do what you need to do, whether that be drive at night or work on the computer, that's a pretty good sign that they're maybe ready to come out. And you should ask your doctor if they feel they're ready as well. And finally, just a plug for getting an annual eye exam. Your doctor will dilate your eyes every year and take a look at that full lens of your eye and they'll be able to tell if you have a cataract forming or not. Can you wait too long for a cataract? Yes, in fact, cataracts can become hyper mature. As the lens gets more and more dense and layers are put down with age and that lens gets more opaque, you can even have something called a white cataract form. When you get into having these more hyper mature cataracts, it becomes more difficult to remove them. It takes more energy to break them up, which is just a little more potential trauma on your eye, potential inflammation for you to recover from after surgery. And you can even have um, very hypermature cataracts that cause other issues. Probably a whole separate video should be made on hypermature cataracts. 
Well, that's it for today. Thanks as always for joining me. I hope you learned a lot about cataracts. Let me know your experience with cataract surgery or your cataracts down in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you every single week.